This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey guys, Maven here. As most of you already know, from 2001 through 2005, I was a WWE wrestler. Several years after I left, I had the worst day of my life, culminating in my arrest. Now you may be asking yourself, Maven, why share this story? Why open yourself up to the potential scrutiny of sharing too much of your life? Well, fair points, but for me, there's two reasons. The first, since through 2012, this story's been out there. You've <laughs> probably read it. Well, today I get to tell my side of it. And the second reason, I need to hold myself accountable. Hold myself accountable for the actions that I inflict. So with all that said, this one's gonna be a tough one, but let's tell the story. Now, the best way to start this video is to talk about the very first painkiller I ever took. And trust me, I'm not trying to romanticize uh, addiction. I'm not trying to romanticize or talk great about taking painkillers. I am not, but I have to tell the story. And to do that, I have to tell you what led to my addiction. So the way it all began, regular night, I was wrestling Hardcore Holly on SmackDown. End of the match, he goes up for a very routine move. And actually, you younger wrestlers, don't make my mistake. He's going off for a double ax handle. The move was I was going to put my foot up, catch him in the face, and stun him a little bit. I actually stuck my hand out, and when he came down, he landed directly on my hand, exploding the tip of my finger through the bone. Now, this hurt like crazy, but I knew I had a few days off, so it was something that I could easily get taken care of. I go backstage to see our trainer. He <laughs> tapes it up and immediately makes a call to the office to have me looked at the next day. WWE flew me to New York to where the next morning I met with a hand specialist. Very simple routine surgery. In fact, they numbed me from the wrist down and I was actually able to watch while they removed my fingernail, fixed the bone, sewed the fingernail back on and taped me back up and I would not miss any action. So after the quick surgery was completed, it was back on the road and they were sending me to San Francisco. But first I had to make one stop and that stop was to a pharmacy to fill a 30 count prescription for Percocets that they gave me for the pain. Now, up until this point, I had never taken a painkiller in my life. I always told myself and I actually told friends that it wasn't gonna be me. I was gonna be the guy that was gonna be tough enough, pun intended, and get through any injury on the road. That would be my downfall. So I fill my prescription and head directly to the airport. Now, I didn't know if I was gonna actually take any of the medication, but I did know I had a five to six hour flight and the finger, it was throbbing and it was hurting. So before takeoff, I opened that pill bottle up and I took my very first painkiller. And I have to be honest, I'm like I said, I'm not romanticizing drug abuse in any way, but it immediately felt amazing. My pain was gone and I felt like I was even higher than the airplane once we took off. And I immediately knew I was onto something there. So little did I know that this one decision, this one act going against what I said I would never do would have such major life repercussions later in my journey. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the way painkillers work, Trust me, one eventually becomes two, two eventually becomes four, four, eight, you get the drift. I think I took my first pill in 2002 and we're looking at 10 years later. By this time I had been out of WWE for you know, going on seven years. I had a career where I wasn't getting beaten on, I wasn't falling, I wasn't taking bumps. But by this time, my body had taken a significant beating. That's not why I took them. By this point, I was completely addicted. And when I talked about how one led to two, I was taking on average between 35 to 50 painkillers every day. That becomes a problem. Why does it become a problem? It wasn't the money, because I wasn't buying them illegally. I was using doctors, and here is where I would get in trouble. On one week, I would visit one doctor, and I would get my prescription filled. The following week, because I would run out, I would visit another doctor and I would get the exact same prescription filled. That would run out, I would visit another one. When it came to 2012, I was visiting, and I'm embarrassed to say, four different doctors, one for every week. 
and that's where I would run into trouble. Now, during this time, I don't want to act like I was, wasn't waking up in any pain. I was, but did I need ex everything that I was taking? I did not. I was just full on addicted by this moment. So let me paint more of a picture of where I was in 2012 at this time. Had a great job with HSN, going on my fifth year of employment with them. Was making great money, was sleeping in my own bed every night. Wasn't having to take bumps day in and day out. Wasn't having to ride in a rental car for hours on end. But there was something that was lacking. There was something that was unfulfilled in my life. And that something would later lead me being placed in handcuffs. For everyone out there, I know there's stuff that you're struggling with. At the time in 2012, we didn't have the services that they have today. I'm happy now that there is help out there and that place is better help. Finding a therapist it can be a daunting task and better help knows this. You might be like me and love your anonymity. Well, they have 30,000 licensed therapists nationwide ready to help you. And this can be done the way you see fit, whether through a phone call, a video call or through messaging. So if you think therapy might help you, I know it would have been beneficial to me. Check out BetterHelp. And while you're there, use my link in the description, betterhelp.com slash maven. So how does BetterHelp work? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is fill out a questionnaire that's gonna be used to help best fit your needs. So after the questionnaire is filled out, usually within 48 hours, BetterHelp will find you a therapist to help fill those needs. And let's say it's not the right fit. Well, BetterHelp will switch you to a new therapist, no additional cost. Over 4 million people has utilized BetterHelp to help themselves live a healthier, happier, more fulfilled life. So if you think therapy can benefit you, I don't do me the favor, do you the favor. Check out BetterHelp. And while you're there, we all love saving money. Use my link in the description and save 10% on your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash maven for 10% savings. During my hardest time of my life, I neglected my mental health. Don't neglect yours. Now we know that my brain was not where it needed to be in 2012. My addiction had pretty much taken over. It was running my life. I was working four different doctors, taking anywhere from 35 to 50 painkillers a day. Every day would start with, did I have enough pills for the day? And end with, do I have enough for tomorrow? This is what led to me getting a call I never expected. I actually had one of the doctors that I was, dare I say, friends with at the time, reach out to me and he told me that a detective was looking into my actions and looking into my actions with him. He warned me and encouraged me, make contact with this detective. See if it's something that you can get in front of. So I reached out to the detective and we actually set up a time for my arrest. We came up with a time and a date, and fortunately for me at the time, my next door neighbor was an attorney. So I informed my next door neighbor what was gonna happen. The detective came over. I arrogantly probably thought I could maybe talk him out of doing his job. I completely understand why I couldn't, but he came and led me from my house in handcuffs. Now, he actually did me a favor at the time, the fact that he only charged me with one count. What was that count? It was called doctor shopping. What is doctor shopping? Basically, pain medication is considered a controlled substance. And whenever you go and start a relationship with a doctor, you sign a piece of paper saying that any controlled substance you get is gonna be from them and only them. I signed that piece of paper four times. Therein lies the problem, because every time I went to another doctor stating that they were going to be the only doctor I got controlled substances from, I was in essence breaking the law. So you might be asking, Maven, why is this illegal? Well, if not, you'd have people like me going to an unlimited amount of doctors getting an unlimited amount of controlled substances. Not good, bad. I was then put in handcuffs, a first for me. I was taken from my house. I was put in the back of his cop car and I was taken to the county jail. My, my neighbor followed and was ready to bail me out and bond me out immediately. 
to say I was scared is it's an understatement. I mean, this is something that I had never been through before, never wanted, obviously, to go through. And you know, whenever you do something for the first time, you just don't know what's to come. I immediately get to jail, go through intake. I know that my neighbor is there working to have me bailed out immediately. I spent probably a few hours going through the intake. At the time, I was put off in a holding cell by myself. And a few hours after the ordeal started, the ordeal was over. But what I did not know and what I could not foresee was the effect it was going to have on my life as a whole. After my arrest went public, and to me, again, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I didn't think actually anyone would find out Oh, was I wrong. As soon as it went out over TMZ and as soon as the, the picture of my mugshot, which is not something I am proud of, as soon as that went out, I started getting calls left and right. And actually one of the first calls I got was from the, uh, the, off, the WWE office offering me assistance, re rehabilitation assistance if needed. I was in one, one mode at the time and that was how can I save my job from HSN. I would immediately find an attorney and actually a great attorney helped me out a lot and made sure that the charge would be reduced and something that I could manage my life with. But by the time my arrest went out and by the time it was on TMZ and the world knew about it, the damage had been done. It was too late. I never would work on HSN television again. In fact, since that day, I, I've never even been in the facility. I was given a phone call and told that my services there were no longer needed. And that, that's a job that I, I hate had to end that way. It was, it was a great job. And I talked earlier about feeling like I was undervalued and underutilized and I wasn't living up to what I hoped for myself in life. The moment that I had a good job taken away from me, I would see that that wasn't even something that I should concern myself with. Because from that moment on, it would become survival mode for me. So finding myself in Florida with no income coming in, I had, I had a decision to ask myself. Was I going to stay in Florida where my options might have been limited or was I going to you know, try and start over? Well, in 2012, I started from scratch. I had everything that I owned in this world loaded up in the back of my uh, truck and I moved up to New York where I had had a friend who had a bar and he said, Maven, I can put you at the door of my bar and definitely put some cash in your pocket. Far cry from where I was at. And it taught me a lesson as well. And that is <laughs> don't complain about your problems. <laughs> because God's just going to give you bigger problems in the long run. Don't get me wrong. I'm extremely uh, humbled and I'm thankful that a friend stepped up at that moment and gave me the opportunity to make some money, to put some cash in my pocket. Now, we've talked about all the negative effects, which there were many of my arrest, but one of the positive effects that it did lead towards it was I think it probably maybe saved my life in the long run because there's absolutely no way at the rate of taking the amount of painkillers I was taking a day, the 35 to 50 a day. The human body cannot sustain that over time. So what took everything away from me probably ended up saving my life in the long run. Um, although I know the damage has been done to my body and that's something I can't undo. The fact that I'm still here, the fact that I'm able to give you guys these videos week after week, is probably only because of that arrest. And for that, I give thanks. Something else I'm grateful for are the relationships I built during my time in the WWE. To find out more about that, click this video. And yes, that is the right one.